Hi everybody, welcome to the Old City of Jerusalem. My name's Alex and I'll be your tour guide here with Abraham Tours for our visit to the Old City during the holidays of Passover and Easter. We're standing here on the rooftop in the center of the Old City, right in the middle where everything happened. Behind me we have the viewpoint of the Temple Mount or the Haram El Sharif where you can see today the Golden Dome, the Dome of the Rock, which is the third holiest site in the world for Islam, but is uh, important to our story for the holiday of Passover and the holiday of Easter. That's the site where Jesus flips over the table of the money changer. It's the site where the Jews came to pray during the holiday of Passover in ancient times. Behind the Temple Mount, we can see the Mount of Olives, where today we see all of the beautiful churches related to the Palm Sunday processional when Jesus comes in on his triumphant march during his uh, uh, way of agony before he's crucified. This is a really important spot here in the Old City, and I'm really excited to show you what we have to offer you today. So guys, let's sit back, relax, and join our virtual tour of Jerusalem live for Easter and Passover. We're standing in the middle of the Jewish quarter right now. Now you look around and you wonder, okay, how I see, uh, I could see that, how do you know? If you get lost in the old city of Jerusalem, there's a really easy way to tell that you're in a Jewish neighborhood. And what's that? It's this little thing right next to the door of every Jewish person's house. This object over here is known as a mezuzah. And inside of this mezuzah is the most famous prayer in Judaism, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Followed by the next verse. Mark these words which I command you this day. Keep them close to your heart and close to your mind. Mark them on the doorposts of your home. And so on and so on. And where does this commandment come from? It comes from the holiday of Passover. Yes, if we go back to the story of Passover, the Pharaoh of Egypt is treating the Hebrews really, really poorly, and the Hebrews um, are suffering. So their leader, Moses, goes up to Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. So then God gets pretty angry. And what does God do? He sends 10 plagues to punish the Egyptians so that the Hebrews are let go. He sends blood instead of water, frogs that uh, infest the city. He kills the, wild, the, the cattle. He sends famine, hail. And the last plague might be the worst of all, death of the firstborn son. Now, in order for the angel of death to know the difference between the Egyptian babies and the Hebrew babies, he commands Moses to tell the Hebrews to slaughter a ram and paint its blood around the doorposts of their house. This way, the angel of death would be able to recognize the Hebrews' home and pass over that home in order for the firstborn to be spared. This is where we get the name of the holiday, Passover. Passover, because the angel of death passed the Hebrew babies. The Egyptians weren't so lucky. In the morning, Pharaoh awoke and his firstborn son was dead. From that tradition, we get this tradition of the mezuzah put on Jewish homes that protects the home. It's kind of a security system, uh, uh, a security system for your soul. Um, and this is where the tradition of the mezuzah comes from. We're standing here at the viewpoint of the Temple Mount and the Western Wall. Now, the site is the most important site in the world for Judaism, not because the wall is a remaining part of the original Jewish temple, but it is the oldest remain, remnant of the surrounding wall that King Herod built to his expansion of the second Jewish temple. Where the Golden Dome is standing today um, once stood the first and the second Jewish temple. Now this is really important because Jews from around the world used to come to Jerusalem to make a pilgrimage for three holidays throughout the year, one of them being the holiday of Passover. This is one of the three official holidays of the Jewish Bible. Now, why is this important to us today? Well, because the holiday of Passover is also related to the holiday of Easter. Passover is a really important holiday for Jews, where Jews around the world eat special food such as an unleavened bread called matzah, because when the Jews left Egypt, they were unable to have time to let their bread rise. So they threw the dough on their backs, and the dough baked on their way as they made their exodus from Egypt. Now, today we celebrate this holiday by eating these special foods because Jews from around the world would come here to Jerusalem to make sacrifices during the times of the temple. Why is this important for our holiday of Easter? Jesus was Jewish, and he too would celebrate the holiday of Passover by coming to the temple. 
Jesus was in Jerusalem because he was celebrating the holiday of Passover. Now, when he came to Jerusalem, he wasn't very happy with what he saw here. He saw people doing business in the holiest place in the world for God. Money changers, changing money of pilgrims from around the world coming here to the old city. When Jesus saw the money changers doing the business in the holiest site in the world, he got really angry. And he went and he flipped over the money changers' tables and he got into a lot of trouble. This is kind of the beginning of the end for Jesus during his story of, pa of Easter. Behind the Temple Mount, we could see the Mount of Olives. Jesus spent every evening in the Mount of Olives, and he would come to the city during the day. Today, pilgrims from around the world, Jews, Christians alike, come here to the Western Wall. There's a tradition to write a note inside of, on a piece of paper and fold it up to put it between the cracks of the stones. This is believed to be the hotline to God. We're standing in front of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, or the Church of the Holy Tomb. This is the holiest site in the world for Christianity. In this place, Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Now, I know it looks like a church behind us right now, but imagine 2,000 years ago, this was outside of the city walls of the old city of Jerusalem. This was the place of the Golgotha, the mountain. It was an abandoned quarry, which we'll check out inside in a few seconds. Um, today, it's the holiest place in the world. Um, the church was originally built in the fourth century by Queen Helena and she came here on a mission in 331 CE to explore the Holy Land, to find the sites that were related to the Bible. And here she found the cross where Jesus was crucified and declared this place the site of Jesus' crucifixion. Let's go inside. We're standing in front of the Golgotha, the Calvary, the site where Jesus was crucified. Now, as you can see behind me, it's a chapel today belonging to the Greek Orthodox Church. If you look over to my left or your right over here, we can see that there's a chapel that looks completely different from everything that we see behind me. That's because the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a really, really complicated place. It's not a regular church where you just show up and pray. This church belongs to six different denominations of Christians. We have Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, Syrians, Copts, and Ethiopians that all share custody of this site right behind us. Now, the site behind us belongs to the Greek Orthodox, and it is the site where Jesus was crucified died on the cross and removed from the cross and given to his mother before he was buried into the holy tomb. Today the church is a site, a pilgrimage site for Christians from all around the world who come to pray here and it's a really, really magical site. Pilgrims can come to the site where the cross stood and touch the original bedrock of the uh, cross where Jesus was We're standing crucified. in front of a beautiful mosaic here inside of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now, as you can see, this mosaic is quite beautiful, but it serves a very, very logistic purpose here inside of the building. As I said at the beginning, this site is the place where Jesus is crucified, buried, and resurrected. And this mosaic behind me serves as a map of the church. It shows exactly where the different things inside of the church happened. Right behind me, we could see Jesus being crucified outside of the city walls of Jerusalem. And this is important because according to the gospel, Jesus wasn't crucified inside of the walls of the city because the Romans liked to crucify outside of their city walls. As we pan to the left, we could see Jesus's body being prepared on the stone of unction. And right across from the mosaic, we have the actual stone of unction where Jesus's body was prepared before his burial. And if we looked all the way to the left of the mosaic, we could see Jesus's body being placed inside of the holy tomb. Now, the holy tomb is located on the left end of the mosaic. So both this mosaic adds beauty to the church as well as a map to find where you are. We're standing in my second favorite spot inside of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now you might ask yourself, second favorite spot, you're in a hallway. But right here, we're in a spot where we could see three different archeological levels of this very site. To my right, we could see the original wall built by St. Helen in the fourth century in the year 331 when she came here to the city of Jerusalem. She built her church here in the fourth century. And why is this amazing? Because this church has been destroyed and rebuilt time and time again. And having an original part of the church is truly incredible. Now, to my left, we could see two pillars. We have a skinny pillar with a basket on top and we have a huge pillar with a Corinthian capital. Now the skinny pillar is from the 8th century when the Byzantines rebuilt the church and renovated it, and this area was an open outside courtyard. Later on in history, the Crusaders came here and they made a massive renovation and built it, the church much heavier. So they had to build a much stronger pillar to hold up the dome. Now, 
so cool to see that this church is a living, breathing organism, ever changing, and we're here today to see all of the standing different right now in front of the tomb of Jesus. This is one of the holiest sites in the world, and I know it doesn't look like a hole in a cave, but in this site, there used to be a mountain with a cave inside where 99% of archaeologists and scholars believe that this is the site that Jesus was buried and resurrected. Thousands and thousands of Christian visitors come every day when there's not a global pandemic, of course, to visit this site to see the place where Jesus was resurrected. It's an amazing site, and it's incredible that we can still see it today. We're in my favorite spot inside of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now you're saying to yourselves, Alex, it looks like it should be torn down, it needs renovation, it looks like there's a fire in here. You're correct. This is one of the most controversial places inside of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It belongs to the Syrian Orthodox Church, but the Armenian Orthodox Church claims it's theirs. Whose is it? Because of an agreement known as the Status Quo Agreement, this site has remained in this situation since the 1800s when there was a massive fire inside of the church and the church couldn't agree upon who had the right to fix the area. In the 1980s, the floor inside of this church was so destroyed and devastated that the Israeli government stepped in and put in a fresh floor so believers could come in and enjoy the church, whether it belongs to the Syrians or to the Armenians. The official names, name of this chapel is the Chapel of St. Joseph of Arimathea. St. Joseph of Arimathea is the man who donated his tomb to Jesus when D Jesus was crucified. He was a rich man from Arimathea. And why is this chapel named after him? This is not the site of Jesus' burial. We saw that site outside. It's because archaeologists discovered this tomb right behind me over here. This is a second temple period tomb dating to the time of Jesus. And this is the archaeological evidence that connects Jesus' crucifixion and burial to this site where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre stands today. So this site's unlike many sites here in the Old City. You'd think that this is an active church because it's so important to Christianity. However, this site is under the status quo agreement. No active masses can take place inside of this church. Therefore, it's kind of a unique place where people can come and go have their own meditative uh, prayer inside in order to understand the importance of this place. We can look around. You can see it's pretty quiet in here. It's echoey, um, and the acoustics are quite beautiful. You can see around the church, it's decorated quite modestly. We have a sculpture of an olive tree. The olive tree represents the 14 generations between King David and Jesus, which the Bible opens with the description of the lineage between King David down to, to Jesus. We can also see a, a window that has a beautiful arabesque uh, calligraphy because this site's also a mosque. It's really, truly one of the most unique places here in the old city. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today here on our spin around the old city to visit the sites related to Easter and Passover. I hope you enjoyed your time with me and from all of us here at Abraham Tours, thank you so much for joining us. Happy Easter, happy Passover, and we hope to travel with you very soon.